Hey food lovers, ready to take your taste buds on an epic global adventure? We're diving into the delicious world of fusion cuisines, where flavors from around the world collide to create mouth-watering masterpieces. From Creole fajitas to Italian tacos, you won't want to miss this culinary journey. Let's get cooking and explore new flavors together. My early days in San Antonio, Texas, taught us how to make fajita with skirt steak rather than sliced up meat and vegetables in a saute pan all together. It was made with spices such as chili powder and garlic and oregano and marinated overnight. Now I'm going to be doing something a little different, a fusion recipe, which I call Creole fajita. Creole fajita is made with different chili and oregano and thyme and basil and garlic and so there's a different dimension that we get flavor wise by using the Creole magic spice blend. This is a quick meal rather than marinating the meat overnight we're simply going to score the meat to help tenderize it and then cook it in a cast iron skillet inside the house rather than outside on the barbecue grill. Is it the same? Absolutely not. Is it delicious? Oh, of course it is. We've found it to be a family favorite. We're going to be cooking the meat without marinade. I'm going to be scoring it to help tenderize it, which marinating does. And then also by scoring it, more of the flavor blend goes down into the meat, which also is the same as marinade. Um, so I'll be scoring that across the grain. You'll see this is actually not skirt steak. It's cut off the cow right next to the skirt steak, which is a little cheaper. Uh, for some reason, skirt everybody wants because it is a fajita meat. Um, but you can see that the striations of the meat are very tough and they're also very condensed. But that's what we want. So I'm going to be scoring that across cross grain about every quarter inch not very deep now I'm going to be wanting to get through the silver through the nerve tissue slightly so it does take a little bit of pressure I'll be using Creole Magic which has cayenne pepper rather than the chili arbol and chili California like in the Sonora blend but it also has a lot of wonderful herbs and also some garlic and onion powder as well um, so it really lends itself well to the fajita blend. I'm going to saturate this pretty pretty heavily. Some of this will come off in the cooking process. <clears throat> now some people wet the meat as well. Um, I don't do that because it changes things in the cooking process and again the Creole magic is not as hot as the Cajun so we can use quite a bit here and I'm gonna let that rest for about 10 minutes and into the skillet we will also be doing some vegetable in a skillet um, this is typical and traditional uh, I've seen it done on the grill as well but we're going to take our time and spend it more wisely on the rest of our meal. Um, I've got a couple of mixed onions and a bell pepper. Um, I'm going to slice these onions lengthwise, which is typical. And then also the bell pepper, um, I have a different way of preparing that. Rather than cutting down through the stem and pulling it out and trying to, to separate the membrane and seeds, if I take it and hold it like this with my fingers interlocked and my thumbs right on top, if I give this a sharp push and pull it open, it will break the membrane, break it in half and put, put the stem very close and will lose less pepper. Let me show you how that works. I'm going to interlock my fingers, put my thumbs right on top and give it a quick push and pull. And you can see how it pulls the membrane and right at the stem we have not lost any pe any vegetable at all and peppers are getting pretty expensive anymore they can be up to a dollar dollar 49 a piece I've seen uh, especially for the ones that are colored so that's how I prepare that 
So I'll be slicing this and we'll be back and ready to cook the fajita meat. As you can see, I had charred this on both sides and reduced the heat to about a medium low. I don't want to overcook this. I want to cook it to about a medium to a medium well. This is a tougher piece of meat and the more we dehydrate that, the tougher it is. So as you can see, when it gets hot in an internal temperature, the blood will start coming through and I'll know that that's the temperature. I can also use a meter. I'm going to be cooking the vegetable now and I'm going to be using the roasted vegetable blend. This has got garlic and onion and celery, which is a nice lift that you might not ordinarily see in a fajita vegetable. I'm going to saute that now. I'll be using a little butter. Uh, butter and vegetable just seems to work well and it also ends up with a nicer finish than using olive oil or another kind of oil. And as I said, and as I said, I'm going to be adding some roasted vegetable blend. I'll be using about twice as much roasted vegetable as you normally would on salt, maybe even a little bit more. Because of the extra vegetable, that gives me a good measure. I hope you can see the blood coming through on the thinner parts of this meat. I'm going to let it go a little bit longer before I turn it till it gets through this thicker part of the muscle. To get this nice char on the vegetable, don't turn it too often. We want it to go ahead and have surface area on the skillet for that to go ahead and caramelize and brown off that vegetable. That's going to give us the typical look that we need and also it enhances the flavor. Okay, I have turned the fajita. I'm going to turn it one last time and turn off my heat. I'm going to let the residual heat of the skillet finish cooking it, but this also allows some of the juices to relax, some of the muscle tissue to relax and reabsorb some of that uh, natural juices and things that we would lose if we sliced it right away. I have pulled the fajita now and the vegetables have just about finished. Nice, nice brown color. I turned off the skillet and the residual heat will finish sweating and cooking those down ready for the tortilla. Let's go slice our fajita. Okay, to slice the fajita, once again we want to slice across the grain. And you can see that the grain is running this way. The score is a cross grain. That's also going to give us a Q. Um, so I'm going to cut a portion and cut cross grain very thinly. I'm also going to, for typical cut, cut that at a bias and very thinly. Let's get ready to plate. As you can see, this is nice and moist and it's absolutely wonderful flavor. I just tried that a moment ago. I couldn't resist. And we fill the soft taco for tortilla. We fill the tortilla with some meat and some sauteed vegetable. And that's now ready for somebody to add pico pico or sour cream or whatever they want. Myself, I'm kind of a purist. I like it just that way. Thank you for joining us. Good day.